building a metal airplane, of course you're going to be riveting the airplane together. So the other most important tool probably in your workshop is the rivet gun. This is what the rivet gun looks like. It's a 2x gun. Usually the longer barrel here the more uh, more powerful you have. Usually uh, a 2x and a 3x or you can get by with a 3x gun in your workshop. Uh, 2x is a little small for the larger rivets. It works fine for the little rivets that we're setting uh, right here. Uh, 3x is almost too much power for these rivets but we can turn down the volume. Uh, you need a good swivel or something on the bottom of your rivet gun and a little adjustable air to adjust your air pressure going to the gun. I'll show you just a minute how we adjust the air to make sure it's not hitting too hard and uh, too soft. Uh, you have different heads that go in here. This is called a mushroom head. You can see here it's, uh, it kind of looks like a mushroom. This has uh, rubber around it so that when you put it against the manufactured into the rivet head keeping it perpendicular. The rudder, rubber helps you keep it perpendicular uh, so that when you do uh, set the rivet it will uh, not mar the face of your material. Uh, you have other, um, here's another type of rivet head. This is a, again a, a mushroom type rivet head with the rubber around it. The, the only thing different on this head as you set the surface you can see your shaft actually turns so it even helps you anymore if you happen to be a little bit off center with your gun your rivet head will stay flush with the uh, material that you're working with. For your dome head type rivets uh, the non-flush the other ones will work advanced this is the rivet head set that actually goes over the dome head of the rivet uh, and it's, in, it's in, in the gun also and you set it with a bucking bar. Now I keep mentioning about bucking bars when you have uh, on the manufactured end of the rivet, and we're getting ready to rivet, we have to have something on the back side to compress the rivet. This is a type of bucking bar here that we put up against the rivet. Uh, this is one style. There are just many, many, many styles. Here's just another style for a different angle. This is a very unusual style. You can use it to get in this way or this way or you can go this way or, or this way. So many ways to get in there to reach a rivet. These small rivets I like to use a small uh, palm type uh, buck, bucking bar like this. Now the important thing to remember on riveting is you'll see a lot of people think that you have to just push with this bucking bar so hard that you, you're actually doing the work. It's not. Let the bucking bar do the work for you. In other words, as long as you hold a rivet gun tight against your uh, material here and the bucking bar in place, the bucking bar will do the work. Uh, where you can get in trouble with a bucking bar is if you're not square with your material or your rivet. So if you're on an angle, you're going to fold over your rivet. If you slide off your rivet and the gun is pounding, you're actually going to pound a uh, big dimple area in your skin and that's bad. So the important thing on the bucking bar is to let it do its work, hold it up against the rivet. I usually like to keep my thumb nearby or something other, keep it perpendicular to the exactly square of the rivet, perpendicular to material, and I keep a thumb or something there so it won't walk off or move away from the rivet. When I press the gun there, it's just going to be a, just a short burst, just, just kind of a brrrr, and then to set it. Once you uh, get to setting just hundreds of these rivets uh, with a uh, by yourself or most of the time you're going to have a, somebody, a partner, because he's going to be on the other side of the material and you can't see him and he's going to be holding it and you're going to come up with a plan there like you're going to put the rivet in, put the gun, gun on there and he's going to find it, he might push on it and go, yep, I'm on the rivet, in fact I'll show you that right now we'll put the rivet in and say I'm up on the gun here you can see I got the bucking bar straight on the rivet and you see I'm pushing on it so you know you're solid it against it when you're ready go ready I'm ready go and you push the gun and just a short burst and you set the rivet you'll you'll actually after a while setting when you set hundreds of these you will actually can hear the change in the sound of the rivet when it sets as the rivet sets it actually gets hard and it'll squish out so far on the on the shop end uh, to that one and a half times that the diameter and then, then you'll hear a sound a change in the sound so you know it's set properly and it's just a short burst that's all it is uh, if you calibrate it again you can use your gauge if you lose your calibration 
you can go along like that and uh, look at it and say that's okay. If you're in an area to where you cannot see the rivet, said, so, oh, I can't see it, or I can see it with a mirror, you can actually uh, uh, take your finger, put your finger on there, you can see the little hole, the indentation, and kind of look at it and see if that's a correct size. So if you can't see it, just reach in and hit it with your finger real quickly. Look at it with your gauge. That, yep, that's a good rivet. So now what we're going to do is I'm going to hook up the air to the gun. We're going to adjust the gun. It'll be a noisy. You want to make sure you wear ear protection. And then we're going to take and set this rivet here using a bucking bar. I've hooked up the air to our rivet gun. Now I'm going to show you how we need to adjust the air pressure. Uh, I'm going to start off with the air kind of low. And you always want to have, make sure you have something against uh, the end of this gun before you pull the trigger. Because if you pull the trigger, uh, you can actually shoot this, uh, whatever you have in here, out across the room. It can just break the spring and go. So you always be, want to be very careful. It is a gun, so it has a projectile in the front of it. Now, first, I'm going to put this up against the, some wood here, and I'm going to push it. And this is very low air setting. You can see it's just kind of wimpy. It's not very doing very much. I'm going to turn up the air a little bit more. That's a little bit better. And I'm going to turn it up just a little bit more. That's about right. Now I'll show you what happens if you have it too much, too much air pressure going on. It just, uh, it's way too much pressure and you can't control it. You see that's, it just goes crazy. So we'll turn it back down. And you'll get a good feel for this. Now that feels pretty good. So we're, now we're ready to rivet. I'm going to go ahead and put the rivet in. Make sure it's flush. I usually double check to make sure it is the proper length. I want to make sure that the, our rivet gun is, is perpendicular to our material here. Uh, always want to do that. If you don't, you're going to end up with a smiley face, which I'll show you that in just a minute. If we don't have it uh, perpendicular, you can mess it up. So first, once what's up against there, we're going to put our bucking bar up against the rivet. Make sure it's perpendicular to this shop end of the rivet. You know, if you want to make sure you're not tilted one way or the other, because if you are, you'll fold over your rivet. Now I'm going to go ahead and anchor my thumb right here, just to kind of keep this bar from not walking off the rivet. Because if it walks off the rivet, you can really dent this side of the metal. And again, we're going to let our bucking bar do this. You notice I'm not really got the big brute strength really pushing hard on this. I've just got the bucking bar there holding it nice and firmly in place. Not a lot of pressure. And then hold it in place. We got it anchored. We're perpendicular. Our gun's perpendicular. And then we're going to give it about a one and a half second burst here. Okay, let's take a look at a rivet. Okay. Okay, that's a nice looking rivet there. You noticed uh, we take and put the rivet gauge on it. Uh, we'll go over the head there, and you can see there it just won't clear that. So that's a very good. We've squashed that out on the manufactured or what to call the shop end, I'm, I'm sorry, uh, very, very nicely. So that's how you set a good rivet.